Okay, well, we are going live as we await President Obama to give his primetime address on terror. Um, I'm not sure whether to laugh, to cry, or go take extra blood pressure medication uh, because all three are probably appropriate. Um, going to hopefully allow you to listen to some of what he has to say. Uh, I'll comment as we go along. I'll comment when it's over. Amy's sitting here beside me, so uh, we'll get her thoughts and opinions as well. We got our two dogs here in the living room with us as we watch on our big screen TV, and um, we'll hopefully keep them occupied. If they start barking, you'll know that they didn't like what Obama said either, so... Uh, <laughs> well, then they'll bark before he ever starts. Uh, I was just watching on Fox News, and Charles Krauthammer was talking about how when he gets done with the speech tonight, he's going to a, a big Hollywood get-together. I don't know the details. I don't know if he... Oh, here we go. The president. On Wednesday, 14 Americans were killed as they came together to celebrate the holidays. They were taken from family and friends who loved them deeply. They were white and black, Latino and Asian, immigrants and American-born, moms and dads, daughters and sons. Each of them served their fellow citizens, and all of them were part of our American family. Tonight, I want to talk with you about this tragedy, the broader threat of terrorism, and how we can keep our country safe. The FBI is still gathering the facts about what happened in San Bernardino, but here's what we know. The victims were brutally murdered and injured by one of their co-workers and his wife. So far, we have no evidence that the killers were directed by a terrorist organization overseas <laughs> or that they were part of a broader conspiracy here at home. But it is clear that the two of them had gone down the dark path of radicalization embracing a perverted interpretation of Islam that calls for war against America and the West. They had stockpiled assault weapons, ammunition, and pipe bombs. So this was an act of terrorism designed to kill innocent people. Glad he finally decided that. Our nation has been at war with terrorists since Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 Americans on 9-11. In the process, we've hardened our defenses from airports to financial centers to other critical infrastructure. Intelligence and law enforcement agencies have disrupted countless plots here and overseas and worked around the clock to keep us safe. Our military and counterterrorism professionals have relentlessly pursued terrorist networks overseas, disrupting safe havens in several different countries, killing Osama bin Laden, and decimating al-Qaeda's leadership. Over the last few years, however, the terrorist threat has evolved into a new phase. As we've become better at preventing complex, multifaceted attacks like 9-11, terrorists turn to less complicated acts of violence, like the mass shootings that are all too common in our society. It is this type of attack that we saw at Fort Hood in 2009, in Chattanooga earlier this year, and now in San Bernardino. And as groups like ISIL grew stronger amidst the chaos of war in Iraq and then Syria, as the internet erases the distance between countries, we see growing efforts by terrorists to poison the minds of people like the Boston Marathon bombers and the San Bernardino killers. For seven years, I have confronted this evolving threat each and every morning in my intelligence briefing. And since the day I took this office, I have authorized U.S. forces to take out terrorists abroad precisely because I know how real the danger is. As commander in rules of engagement ring a bell security of the American people. As a father to two young daughters who are the most precious part of my life. That are protected by men with guns. With friends and a lot of men with guns. A holiday party like the one in San Bernardino. I know we see our kids in the faces of the young people killed in Paris. And I know that after so much war, many Americans are asking whether we are confronted by a cancer that has no immediate cure. 
Well, here's what I want you to know. The threat from terrorism is real. But Duh. We will overcome it. We will destroy ISIL and any other organization that tries ISIS. to ISIS. Our success won't depend on tough talk nor abandoning our values. Good thing, because you don't talk defeat. tough. That's what groups like ISIL are hoping for. Instead, we will prevail by being strong and smart, resilient and relentless, and by drawing upon every aspect of American power. Here's how. First, our military will continue to hunt down terrorist plotters in any country where it is necessary. In Iraq and Syria, airstrikes are taking out ISIL leaders, heavy weapons, oil tankers, infrastructure. And since the attacks in Paris, our closest allies, including France, Germany, and the United Kingdom, have ramped up their contributions to our military campaign, which will help us accelerate our effort to destroy ISIL. Second, we will continue to provide training and equipment to tens of thousands of Iraqi and Syrian forces fighting ISIL on the ground so that we take away their safe havens. In both countries, we're deploying special operations forces who can accelerate that offensive. We've stepped up this effort since the attacks in Paris, and we'll continue to invest more in approaches that are working on the ground. Third, we're working with friends and allies to stop ISIL's operations, to disrupt plots, cut off their financing, and prevent them from recruiting more fighters. Since the attacks in Paris... My blood pressure is on its way up already, by the way. Allies. We're working with Turkey to seal its border with Syria. And we are cooperating with Muslim-majority countries and with our Muslim communities here at home to counter the vicious ideology that ISIL promotes online. He seems to know how to pronounce that word Muslim very well. With American very well. the international community has begin, begun to establish a process and timeline to pursue ceasefires and a political resolution to the Syrian war. Doing so will allow the Syrian people and every country, including our allies, but also countries like Russia, to focus on the common goal of destroying ISIL, a group that threatens us all. This is our strategy to destroy ISIL. It is designed and supported by our military commanders and counterterrorism experts together with 65 countries that have joined an American-led coalition. That laugh at you regularly. ...our strategy to determine when additional steps are needed to get the job done. That's why I've ordered the Departments of State and Homeland Security to review the visa waiver program under which the female terrorist in San Bernardino originally came to this country. But you won't and secure our borders. I will urge high-tech and law enforcement leaders to make it harder for terrorists to use technology to escape from justice. Yeah, we'll just make them cross the borders illegally. We have to work together to address the challenge. There are several steps that Congress should take right away. To begin with, Congress should act to make sure no one on a no-fly list is able to buy a gun. What could possibly be the argument for allowing a terrorist suspect to buy a semi-automatic weapon? This is a matter of national security. We also need to make it harder for people to buy powerful assault weapons, like the ones that were used people? in San Bernardino. I know there are some who reject any gun safety measures, but the fact is that our intelligence and law enforcement agencies, no matter how effective they are, cannot identify every would-be mass shooter. That's why we need to be armed ourselves. Goodness gracious, are we going to go here? What we can do, and must do, is make it harder for them to kill. They'll get their weapons no matter what. Are you crazy? Those who come to America without a visa so that we can take a hard look at whether they've traveled to war zones. And we're working with members of both parties in Congress to do exactly that. Finally, if Congress believes, as I do, that we are at war with ISIL, it should go ahead and vote to authorize the continued use of military force against these terrorists. For over a year, Let them decide the rules of engagement then, you wuss. Targets. I think it's time for Congress to vote to demonstrate that the American people are united and committed to this fight. My fellow Americans, these are the steps that we can take together to defeat the terrorist threat. Let me now say a word about what we should not do. 
Here we go. Be drawn once more into a long and costly ground war in Iraq or Syria. That's what groups like ISIL want. They know they can't defeat us on the battlefield. ISIL fighters were part of the insurgency that we faced in Iraq. But they also know that if we occupy foreign lands, they can maintain insurgencies for years, killing thousands of our troops, draining our resources, and using our presence to draw new recruits. I almost the agree with him on that something. We are using now, Air strikes, special forces, and working with local forces who are fighting to regain control of their own country. That local forces. Let's just make sure we don't let them have our weapons, and they are actually bad guys. Generation of Americans overseas to fight and die for another decade on foreign soil. Here's what else we cannot do. We cannot turn against one another by letting this fight be defined as a war between America and Islam. That, too, is what groups like ISIL want. <laughs> ISIL does not speak for Islam. They're thugs and killers, part of a cult of death. And they account for a tiny fraction of a more than a billion Muslims around the world. Muslim sympathizing... Ideology. Moreover, the vast majority of terrorist victims around the world are Muslim. If we're to succeed in defeating terrorism, we must enlist Muslim communities as some of our strongest allies. They don't even the speak out against their own... And hate. Ugh. That does not mean denying the fact that an extremist ideology has spread within some Muslim communities. Some. It's a real problem. That Muslims must confront without excuse. You make excuses for them, so why shouldn't they make excuses for them? I'm about tired of listening to you already. You're such an idiot. Unequivocally reject the hateful ideology that groups like ISIL and Al Qaeda promote. To speak out against not just acts of violence, but also those interpretations of Islam that are incompatible with the values of religious tolerance, mutual respect, and human dignity. That have a Quran that say if you don't convert, we will kill you. To root out misguided ideas that lead to radicalization, it is the responsibility of all Americans, of every faith, to reject discrimination. It is our responsibility to reject religious tests on who we admit into this country. It's our responsibility to reject proposals that Muslim Americans should somehow be treated differently. Because when we travel down that road, we lose. That kind of divisiveness, that betrayal of our values, plays into the hands of groups like ISIL. Muslim Americans are our friends and our neighbors. Yeah, they were the neighbors of those people that just killed 14 people in San Bernardino. They were neighbors. They had an IED factory as part of their house, and they were neighbors. You have to remember that. Yeah, you have to remember that. My fellow Americans, I am confident we will succeed in this mission because we are on the right side of history. We were founded upon a belief in human dignity. That no matter who you are or where you come from or what you look like or what religion you practice, you are equal in the eyes of God and equal in the eyes of the law. Okay, well, we're back. We had some uh, connection problems with the Internet here in the house and uh, lost the connection, but we are back, and the president just wrapped up his little charade. I'm not even going to call it a speech because it wasn't a speech. He didn't even have the dignity enough to sit in the chair behind the desk at the Oval Office and look presidential. You know why? Because he needed that teleprompter mm -hmm, and the course. teleprompter would have been visible if he'd have been sitting behind the desk what a what a sad sad day for America that the day that that man was elected president I don't care what race what religion what color what fill in the blank you are it was a sad day for America when Barack Hussein Obama took over control in the Oval Office. That speech was pathetic. That He didn't say anything, 
anything that we didn't know. He didn't. He didn't reassure us. He didn't re- reassure the world. And goodness gracious, uh, I, I am sure that there are millions and millions and millions of people around the world who just watched that and probably just uh, LMAO. Well, not they should be. Because that was the least presidential thing I think I have ever seen in my life. Amy? I think it was an embarrassment. He needs to be ashamed of himself. Well, he's he has no shame. And it, it's pathetic that we took as long as we did to say that it was terrorism. <laughs> and th- now that it is terrorism, we want to say things like, well, they weren't tied to any terrorist group. Uh, it's t- it is it is classic ISIS. Absolutely. You know, just because maybe they didn't get a straight communication from ISIS, which we don't know that they didn't either anyway, but ISIS has said, do these kind of things on your own. Absolutely. That's direct communication. Yep. And... His wussy statement about we're not at war with Islam proves that he knows nothing, nothing about the enemy or he knows every single thing about the enemy because he is the enemy. One of the two. And if I sound strong about this, if I sound hateful about this, uh, so be it. Just so be it. Uh, he kept trying to choke down our throat that Muslim Americans are our friends. And, and I'm not saying that there aren't Muslim Americans who don't legitimately feel bad about what happened in San Bernardino. I, I'll give you that. And I think Amy has something she wants to say. I just don't understand how M- Muslim Americans... If, if you want to use that term, could care less about those people that died. Their own so-called Bible, their Koran, specifically says either to convert or die. So the whole idea of being a Muslim, if you follow your Koran, Koran, however you want to say it, they're terrorists, period, dot. How can you follow something that says you either convert to Muslim, or die. I, I don't get it. I, I don't. Well, and that's why we're at war with Islam. Oh, he said we're not? I don't care what he said. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't care about that comes out anything. His insepid face is worth listening to anyway. He said that freedom is more powerful than fear. I'm not afraid. Are you afraid? I'm not afraid. Let them come here. To say that you want to arm yourself, to say that you want to be prepared, that's not fear. Nope, that's not fear at all. That, That is more courage than fear. Fear is to say that we've got to stop letting people, people have access to high-powered weaponry. I don't disagree that somebody that is on the no-fly list should not be able to purchase a gun. I agree with that. That seems to be common sense. Common sense gun law. Oh, they have a common sense gun law. It's the only one I've heard, but... I mean, felons can't... See, this don't make no sense to me. Felons can't buy a gun. Right. So why should somebody on the no-fly no list be able to buy again? Well, you've got to be on a no-fly list for a reason. It's not because, you know, you cussed out your Aunt Polly or something. You've got to have a, a specific reason to be on a no-fly list. Well, and have we found out that these two were on a no-fly list? I've not heard anybody say that they were on a no-fly list. I haven't either. They must have not been because he flew to Pakistan. Right. Or I've heard two or three different places he supposedly flew to. Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, 
And so he, and he brought her back. He couldn't have been on a no fly list because he was able to purchase guns legally. Well, he he's saying that just being on a no fly list <laughs> does not keep you from being able to buy a gun. He's just ignorant. So, if if that's the case, if uh, okay, I'm looking at some notes here. Um, people in Paris are calling the the address a joke. <laughs> well, it is a joke. Uh, let's see. There is a. Okay, we're going to wind this thing up. Uh, it was an embarrassment from the very first second. Uh, it was a waste of time for everyone who who participated. And um, just do this, folks. Get your concealed carry permit. Protect yourselves. Protect your family. And... We can we can do this. You don't have to live in fear. We can do this, and we can win against terrorism, but we cannot depend on the phony that is in the White House to protect our nation. Good night. God bless, and I encourage you to go out and do the right thing.